Hi everyone and welcome to my first tea chunk of the year of 2018 where I keep these videos short as possible. As you can see I have a brand new calendar right behind me. Of course it's the My Little Pony the movie calendar which has replaced last year's calendar which was this the Moomins. You can see Snort Maiden and Moomin walking with Sniff and Little Mai by the, the woods there. Now this calendar did good service to me last year. Let's hope that this year's calendar of My Little Pony the Movie will do the same. Which I'm sure it will. Now one of my ambitions is to become a voice artist. And last week I have auditions for Discord Tales 2 from Pinky Tales by Magpie Pony as Featherbangs. And I just found out this morning typically typically I didn't get the part. which means another day in the rejection office. So, how do I feel? Well, after seeing that video that I wasn't casted, just basically shocked really that I didn't get the part and that. And face face and rejection from other bands that do uh, projects, stories in their casting call. I try to audition for them, but I get the same treatment, the rejection. Which made me ask one question. What does the future hold for my voice acting career? Well, I have decided that it will be like the three strikes. I will audition for stories, upcoming stories, and as you know the rules of baseball, if you miss the swings and get the three strikes, you're out. That is on the voice acting thing. If I get three rejections from Bronies and Pegasisters who want voice actors on their story, I think my voice acting career will be over because I, I can't take any more of it. I mean it's not just in my ambition, it's also in the job market as well. I've faced so much rejection throughout my life, since 2010 actually, so yeah, that's nearly eight years. And I just feel like every time I'm in a company or waiting the news, whether I've got a job or not, or whether I've got the um, part or not, I just know the answer. It's the capital R. Sorry. Bye. See ya. But anyway, I got me like a little thing to make me feel better. And I do feel better now, I do, because I have news that after a long time of waiting, Princess Skystar has her friend. Yay! Thank you, bye! She's here at last with Princess Skystar. And as you can see, between these two, Princess Skystar does the beginning part of One Small Thing. Okay, 
maybe some, some of the, uh, what one ending of the song. And here's Pinkie Pie. Pinkie Pie and Princess Guy Star are together. Yay! Yay! Shop, 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 shop. Are we going to be in season eight? I don't know, but it's going to be so exciting! <laughs> we'll, we'll have to see. We we'll really have to see. Come on. I wonder if they are going to be on season eight. Who knows? Could be one of the surprises for season eight. Princess Sky Star and Pinkie Pie together in season eight. <laughs> and what's funny actually is as we on as we know in season five, um, Pinkie Pie meets Minuet, which is we all know Minuet happens to be the Pinkie Pie of Cantaloupe. And now we have the Pinkie Pie of Sequestria. Princess Star. Most of you in America and Canada, who are Bronies and Pecker Sisters obviously, have My Little Pony the movie on DVD. But in Europe, I think in Europe, and the UK, they don't, it's not released yet. And if it does get released, will I buy it? And the answer is... No. I will not buy it. When it comes out. Because of three words. The. Storm. King. He is the villain. That completely ruined the whole movie for me. He was just too childish and disappointing and the voice wasn't the best. He was, he was basically like a five-year-old. He played with his scepter full of princesses Luna, Cadence and Celestia. Just like a toy, really. You know, zap, 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 day, no, day, no, day, no. Wow, you really control the time right here in Equestria. Whoa, it's snowing. Whoa, it's raining. Whoa, da, 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 da. And he was a bit of a child with um, Tempest Shadow as well. Because the Storm King I was hoping for was like Tyrek, basically. You know. He was supposed to be the guy that was supposed to be the most feared villain of the film. Because he made a deal with Tempest that if he, if she helps the Storm King rule Equestria, he will give her her horn back. But, as you all know, he, did, he didn't. And he just t took Tempest for granted. And I could imagine how Tempest would have felt. And you could see why. You could see why Tempest fell into the side of friendship. But I'm not just I'm not really just I'm not really that fussed that I'm not gonna get the D V D because I've got the memories of it. I've got the memories of it at least. Like for instance, I have a soundtrack which I posted on my Twitter page saying that it was the end of it because it kept um, skipping parts of songs 
on it, but I managed to fix it, so that remains alive. I have the sticker collection book. So it's got scenes in there, you know, memorable scenes in, in here, including a, including a poster, like that. And I also got, as I posted in Manchester last year, Tempest Story. And finally, this is kind of like the DVD in a way. I have the book of the movie. It's not like this book here, you can see it, it's not like that. I think this one's better because um, it's got really good pictures in here, like this one, that one, this one, and this one. So pretty good stuff, pretty good pictures in there. Okay, well that concludes my tea chunk video. Thank you all for watching. I will end this like I end with all my T-Log videos, and that is Marufuf and goodbye.